Instagram, par five with Mike Malaska, at BB underscore golf show, at Mike Mal at Malaska golf. At Malaska golf. Go for it, Mike. All righty. I'd be really good if I could play this hole every time. A little right. dog leg left, par five. <laughs> John Daly designed the course like that, all par five. And all dog leg left. Mm -hmm. Still can kind of get it out there. So were you playing at the same tournament as, as Austin at, at the Utah Open? Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I still like to play against the young guys and occasionally I beat them and that's always fun. Same thing now, get your, fun, but let me get, my... get your picture, get your feel for the shot that matches yep. the shot, now just, you're done going to duplicate what you just felt. Where the ball goes doesn't matter. Duplicate the feel. All right, we got this par five. Worked out pretty good. We're, we're level. I'm on the right side. Mike's over on the left side. 244 to go. Uh, wind is quartering like this. Yeah. So I'm going to soak up on this and I'm going to really, I'm, I'm visualizing a run up. Okay, now are you going to try to hit a fade or a draw? I'm not gonna fight it, so I am gonna I'm gonna try to let it draw. Hit a level swing. Yeah, exactly. Let it draw, not like make a draw, but let it draw. Okay, well, that's good because this, this kind of light tends to get the ball to draw because of what the face wants to do. Oh man, that was just right off the toe. Right. So what did you feel you did wrong? I just got like alligator arms right here. And yeah. it went right off the toe. I need I didn't stay wide at all. I think I was a little nervous about the hill and I shortened it a little bit. You pulled in. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So now if we are if we're out here practicing today, I'd say, okay, here you go. This is how you practice. We got the same lie. Make your practice swing. So you pulled in, you didn't have to. Now okay, here's how I adjust for these lies. Yeah. So you got it. This is a, you can't, it's hard to see on a camera, but this is a pr pretty severe ball above your feet lie. So if you set up the same way you normally do with the same angle in your body and you don't pull away, you're going to hit it fast. So here's how I adjust. Anytime the line changes, so if, if the ground goes up, my upper body adjusts to the ground the same as it would be on a flat lie. So when the ball comes above my feet, I stand up straighter. That's all it because that puts me in the same relation to the ground. Now you left your body in the same position. You held the club pretty much the same. So unless you pull in, you're going to hit it fast. Right. So the adjustment that you should have made, or that I would make, is I'd set up the same, but I'm going to stand a little taller because the ball's a little higher. So now I can, I can make my same swing and hit it solid. So anytime you adjust to an uneven lie, you've got to get your upper body in the same relationship to the ground as it would be on a flat lie. So you're going to stand up a little taller on this one because the ball is more above your feet. That feels good. Which is going to make your swing a little more around you, which is going to fit the lie. And then you hit a good shot. Okay, so I didn't see any adjustment to the lie with your setup. My execution was about the same, just my anticipation beforehand was better. Well, okay, you were bent over, the ball's closer to you, your brain's going, you better bail out of this thing or you're going to hit it fast so it pulls back away from it. Okay, so now I've got a downhill lie here. So to, to accommodate a downhill lie, I'm going to have to get my upper body tilted forward more to match the lie. When I do that, it's also going to make my club hit the ground a little sooner, so I move the ball back in my stance a little. And what that's also going to do is it's going to take a little loft off the face. So this fairway wood is going to get turned down a little bit, so ball's back, shoulders are down. Now I'm not going to fight the ball, but the ball's going to go a little bit lower. So the ball went a little bit lower, I turned it over a little too much. But I accommodated the lie with my setup, so I still hit it solid. Yeah. I, I turned the face down a little bit, so if I was going to make a practice swing, I'd do the same thing, and i just work the face where I don't turn it over as much. 
But anytime you have these uneven lies, you have to adjust your setup so that your swing bottoms out correctly so you actually hit the ball. Most yeah. people don't accommodate. Yeah. They set up, regardless of the lie, they set up the same way they would on a flat lie on the range. And what happens then is then their swing, the circle of their swing, doesn't hit the ground where the ball is. So now they miss hit shots and they blame their swing. No, it was the lie and the way they set up to it. You didn't accommodate the change in the lie. So when you look at these golf courses, uh, there's hardly ever flat lies except on the tees. So the better you get, you start to learn, you feel yourself making little adjustments to make the bottom of your swing work. All right, par five, we got uh, Mike's ball right here. Pin high. So, so I'm pin high, I just hooked a little bit, it caught these mounts, but now it's always the lie dictates the shot. So I got a pretty good lie here. I can do just about anything I want to do with it. So with the way this sets up, I want to carry the ball as far as I can. So I'm going to hit a lob wedge so I can get it up in the air so I can carry it onto the green quite a ways and it's still going to stop before it gets to the flag. Now the lie lets me do that. So this is a pretty easy lie to hit almost any shot I want to hit. So every shot you hit, the first thing you have to inspect the lie because the lie tells you what you have access to or the degree of difficulty. Hitting the ball high off that lie is not that hard to do. So I'm pretty much open to anything I want to try. Uh, actually, one, one of the, the, the tour players that watches the channel asked me, he said, hey, are you still doing that, that uh, over the top from the inside kind of tipping theory move on pitch shots? Yeah. So what does it feel like here? Well, so, so this, first of all, I'm going to hit it high, so I always tend to put my hands a little higher, and I want to use the toe of the club. So I want the toe of the club to hit, because if the toe hits first, when the toe hits, it stops and it speeds the heel up, which engages the bounce, and I can still hit a pretty good shot, because yeah. the bounce works. Yeah. The last thing I want is for this edge to catch. All right. It, it, it does digs, shuts. Yeah, so, so, but yeah. This, this swing here, I'm doing the same thing. The handle's coming down. I'm working the club face, so the club's still coming out in front of my hands and coming from the inside. So the club's still coming over the top of my hands from the inside. Oh, beautiful shot, Mike. And that is rolling. Oh, it actually hit a little sprinkler head. And yeah, and he caught the fringe and just stopped. Feet, but, but that's a good shot. I mean, I, I hit it pretty much where I wanted to. Uh, you know, so then that's that's what happens. I mean, golf. You hit off, you hit different places, you get different bounces. You're not going to control that all the time. Okay, when you look at the launch angle of a face, okay, if I were to have a flat lie and I hit this ball, that's the height the ball would go, mm -hmm. and that's the direction. Yeah. Now, as the ball comes above my feet, what happens is the loft in the face becomes launch angle left. Yeah. So when you've got a sand wedge and the ball's above your feet, and you hit the ball, see, what's going to happen is the launch angle of that face is aimed over here. Yeah. It's not because your swing is more around, or it, it, it has to do with this. So the more the ball comes above your feet, and the more loft you have in the club, the more you have to aim to the right to offset what the face is going to do. Yeah, and then you, then you got to consider that it's not going to get as high at all. It's yeah. true, true. So on this shot, you've actually got to, if you want it to go straight at the flag, you're going to have to look at the launch angle. See, I'd have to get aimed about right here. Like, where are you going about like a yard right of your ball? Well, yeah, that's where my swing path is. But because the club's above my feet, see, when the club runs into the ball, the launch angle of the face is aimed over there. So guess where the ball goes? It yeah, goes to the flag. Yeah. Because the ball's above my feet, and the launch angle's aimed left. So you have to learn how to look at that launch angle and aim that launch angle to make it go at the target. Yeah. Here, I'll give you another... Oh, okay. Sure. All right, guys. While we're uh, taking a little break here, just some extra footage that I shot with the cell phone to be able to get stuff out as I'm in Arizona. I'll upload this from the hotel tonight. Shot about eight hours of footage, uh, maybe six. Yeah, yeah, seven or eight hours of footage with Mike today. Okay, Mike. So I'm not going to complicate it. I mean, I, I oh, so you just it. aim a little right. And, and just trust. And just it. don't manipulate it back towards no. the pin. Just no, like you don't have to. You don't have to do anything. Because the fact that the ball's above your feet, the, the face angle is going to launch it more or less. Yep. So you aim, you know, maybe five to ten feet right of the flag. There you go. Make your normal swing, and the launch angle will hit hit the ball over to the left. I just missed it. All right. That's pretty good. Okay.
Yeah. So let's think about this. If you had this lie in the middle of the, if you were out in the fairway and you had a seven iron, yeah. or you had a hundred yard shot, you might want to consider taking an eight iron or a seven iron because that club has less loft, so it's going to launch it less to the left. Yeah. So it's a lot easier to control than a wedge or a sand wedge. Okay, Mike, last time I was out here, you gave a, uh, a putting tip about getting your line, your eyes set up straight and adjusting your setup to be really feeling like you're finally in a place where the line looks straight. Right. That's not what I want to do for uh, your YouTube channel. Okay. What would be the number two putting thing that you would like to, to people to understand? Well, I think once, once, you, once you get the line mm -hmm. and you understand there's where I want the ball to go and then you set your eyes in a position where the line looks like it's actually aimed where it was from back there. So now the line looks good. I'll give him his putter just so he can actually. So yeah, now so the line looks good. Your eyes are so, in that so spot. So the first thing I set up is I set my eyes and the line looks good. So if I'm here, the line looks left. If I'm here, it looks a little right. There, the line looks like it's aimed in the same place it looked like it was aimed here. Yep. So I have, so there's no discrepancy. Once I do that, then I aim the face, then I set up. Then all I'm trying to do is make sure, I'm just trying to hit the ball solid. Just make solid impact with the ball. And if I make solid impact with the ball and it's on the right line, I'm going to putt pretty good. Yeah. So most people, don't practice center face hits and they don't practice rolling the line. I'm not sure what they practice. They drop three balls and go from, from practice hole to practice hole. Well, but but you want to hit in the center of the face and make the line roll. Okay. Now, some people have said oh, in the comments to that video, they're like, well, what if it just never looks straight? They're standing over and they can, for me, for example, got the line where you want it. There it is. Okay, so now all you're going to do is get your eyes where the line looks good, aim the putter, roll the line. Okay, the line rolled. You Ooh. hit a perfect putt. Yeah. The speed was, but you couldn't hit a better putt. So, so. No, at, uh, at about 11 a.m. this morning that would have gone in. Would have gone in. Yeah. So my deal with putting, that's okay, my deal with putting is, yeah. first thing, you got to make sure that you can see line correctly. And then you've got to hit the ball in the center of the face. If you can hit it in the center of the face and make the line roll, you're going to be a good putter. Yeah, you guys can see Mike's had this putter for how long, Mike? A year and a half? Yeah. It's, just it, it, he puts a uh, marker yeah. uh, on his line, so you can see that it's just flushed out of the center yeah. again and again. I don't miss the center too much, uh, nor does most good players on any every club. But so I practice a lot to make sure I've got center face hits. So you're doing the gate. I do the, the gate a lot with yeah. the tees, and I just practice make the line roll, make the line roll, make mm -hmm. the line roll. When I come out and play, I aim the line, roll the line. And if mm -hmm. I do that, I'm putting well. Mm -hmm. Whether or not the ball goes in the hole is not that relevant. Mm -hmm. if, I'm, if I'm hitting it solid and making the line roll, I'm going to make putts. If I'm making putts, but the line isn't rolling and they're going in, I'm, just, I'm going, oh, I got lucky. This isn't going to last. Yeah. Yeah. So I could have a really good putting day where I make a lot of putts, but I wouldn't feel very good about my putting. Yeah, if you're I know in a four-day tournament, and, I'm going and this on Thursday you have one of those days where day. I pull it and it breaks back to the right and goes yeah. in, which everybody does. And you could have 26 putts and still be on Not the putting practice screen well. afterwards oh, trying no to question. work it out. Yeah. Or I could have 30, 34 putts and not go to the practice screen because I hit every putt per I just what the speed was a little off or I wasn't reading the greens right. right. I don't need to work on my mechanics because I'm hitting it solid and the ball's rolling. Yeah. If you're doing that, you're going to make putts. That's why you hear Tiger and these guys talk about, well, you had 34 putts. He says, well, I putted really well today. Well, you didn't make anything. Well, yeah. I was hitting it online. I was hitting my line and my speed was good. Yeah. That's all they care about. Yeah. The other things will happen. Okay, guys. Thanks for watching. You guys can see more of Mike on his YouTube channel which is Malaska Golf, if you search Malaska Golf. 
and uh, see a lot more videos with Mike on Be Better Golf YouTube channel, which is coming up. Thanks for watching, everybody. Later. Bye.